right, guys, what's up? It's your boy Kittens coming back to you guys with the Commander sets. All of the fun from the new Copernia. It's been a couple days. I know something is terribly wrong. I do not want to open up a bunch of Commander stuff, but realistically, it's just me overthinking my life and more or less realizing I'm suing the government for billions of dollars. So me having these cards is more so an original Commander quest to sort out you know, which commanders are here and which new cards I can add to my collection. Because after becoming a billionaire, there's really no reason for me to do anything else in Magic the Gathering besides getting one copy of every card that I possibly can with the full knowledge that there are some cards in Magic the Gathering that have unmovable positions where I will simply never be able to own them. And honestly, I'm glad that I'm five commander cl sets closer to owning every card in existence, yada, 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 you know. So me overthinking, more or less, the way that I think about cards from being a kid, and just, you know, for me, it was comfort and security, it was uh, playing with friends, and just, you know, knowing that if I ran out of money, and you know, coming from a poor family, and all this, that, and the other, we're just going to start opening these. Okay, so I think they all have their individual, here we go, no, this, here we go, this is actually nice. But me, you know, rethinking what card games mean to me. And I think nowadays it isn't as much monetary investment and just an excuse to spend some time with random friends where you can be, you know, defeated by any group of person, right? Like just, just like win or lose based on one thing or another. Okay, cool. Okay. Collector booster sample. Okay. Okay. All right. Now that's going to be interesting. Yeah, you know, I'm going to pre-open these. I was going to do it box by box, but like, you know, the fact that there's a commander sample thing, maybe we should do the packs first, just straight up. I'm going to just, I'm going to organize all this at some point, but like, I'm kind of deciding what's the most exciting thing. Because for me, this is one of the sets where I'm not going to purchase any of them because I know that the, you know, tons of money and whatever is coming in. So me purchasing a whole bunch of boxes really just ends me with a whole bunch of the same copies of a bunch of commons and stuff where what i'm gonna be able to do is just you know get whatever card i feel like which is weird for me so this is one of the first ones in some years that i just don't have any of so this actually is a little bit more interesting i'm not going to be opening any of these so uh well i mean i'm going to be opening all of them but okay <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> Let's start to open stuff. See what's going on. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Tramway station. Tapped. Really nice art and such. I should, I should look look at it through the camera rather than from the side. Uh, legendary creature, human rogue. When it enters the battlefield, it can die. This is one of you discard one or more cards, exile them from the from your graveyard. When it dies, put the cards exiled with it into their owner's hands. So that's actually rather interesting. I feel like uh, a couple of these, one of these has the connive thing. It's a, I just wanna know for myself here. This is Blitz. Wait a second. Wait a whole second. I've made a mistake here. This, wait a second. Which one of these is connive? It connives. Okay, so then um, to have a creature connive, you draw, then discard, and if you discard a non-land, you get a 1-1 one, one counter on that creature. Nice. Okay. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so that's a little bit of an extension of that. Again, I don't know what commanders and stuff, and that's kind of what I'm the most excited for, the, uh, the different commander archetypes and, and strategies I can do with this set, just to see some of that new stuff. I'm kind of like, I feel like, ooh, inside of the, another one of these, hey, Tramway Station, green, red. All right, all right. And then uh, Garden Stuff, enters the battlefield tapped with cycling. So, okay, that's actually really cool. Okay, I did not have any of the prior set of this. I had kind of skipped out on that. It's like the uh, Zendikar Rising or something, like the redone of Zendikar. That's pretty sweet. And then make new friends, connect with your fellow magic players, Friday Night Magic. Very cool, okay. So see what uh, this in-between is at some point. All right, all right, all right. So, so as two of them opened, I have bumbled around and touched everything in front of me a bunch of times. Time to open another pack. Let's see what's going on with this one. All right. Um, nice. Two hollow versions. Rocco the Cabaretti Carretter. 
or caterer, <laughs> caterer. Okay, when Rocco the caterer, bleh, oh god, caterer enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you may search your library for a creature card with mana value X or less, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle. That's gonna be pretty freaking sweet. That is gonna be sweet. And then uh, what is Xander's Lounge? So is this the? No, okay, so I don't have that one yet. And that's a nice, sweet hollow going on there. I'm liking these booster, these collector booster tasters. This is like land, lands, lands. And there's some pretty sweet commanders on the side. Yeah, okay. The, uh, the Tudor guy seems like maybe the most interesting to me right now. Hideaway 5. That's interesting. Isn't that like you... Is that, I have some of the hideaway lands. So like you just look at the top 5 and then grab 1? Okay, so maybe... I'm not really sure. At the beginning of a combat on your turn, put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature you control. Then if you control a creature with power 7 or greater, you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Um... Ah, uh, okay. So I feel like I'd have to look at what Hideaway is again. But yeah, like I have like Sheldock Isle and the green one for some stuff forever ago. But that's pretty sweet. And what is this guy? Uh, Discipline, Duelist, Double Strike, Enter the Battlefield with a Shield Counter on it. Nice. I really like the in-between. Yeah, the suit's nice. Well-dressed. Well-dressed, my friend. So that's going to be sweet. I don't know if I want to do the... Because it reminds me of the Shield Counters from one of the Commander sets. I think... That the two, yeah, this guy. The two that I want to do, probably the probably the cat and Oculus, or maybe Tourer, maybe. Um, the Adjudicators. There we go. When Adjudicators enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls can't attack or block until the next turn. Ah, very nice. Okay. There's then two exile from hand. Target land gains. One, two, or three until it is cast from exile. You may cast for as long as it remains exiled. That's actually rather interesting as a fixing land. Just cat citizen. I mean, the art's actually. I'm gonna look th look at it through the camera rather than rather than from the side. But very nice. Yeah, I really like the the little additional side of this one. Okay, and a swindler scheme, an enchantment. Um, hmm. Okay, you may reveal the top card of your library. Counter the spell, and the opponent may cast the revealed card without paying its mana cost. Well, that could get interesting. So, I mean, okay, this is asking for trigger trouble. I'm not even going to lie. Like, this just reminds me of counterbalance. Like, what happens when this and counterbalance are on the field at the same time? Like, this is, I mean... If it shares a card type, you counter what they did, and then they get something for free. Like, it's kind of like Knowledge Pool, but awkwardly quicker. And, like, they could kind of consciously, like, the person would know. Okay, never mind. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too complex of a thought. It's time to open up some of these. Um, I feel like I could do the thing where I'm like, you know, I'm not even going to open them. And <laughs> just like, it's the last video I did of this was like me making food and doing some other stuff. But we're gonna start separating some of these. For me, it's more so looking for the commander sections. This is, this is definitely interesting. Council's Dilemma. It's been a long time since I've seen one of these. So enters the battlefield or deals damage, uh, or com deals combat damage to a player starting with you. Each player votes for evidence or bribery. Ooh. For each evidence vote, investigate. For each bribery vote, create a treasure token. Actually interesting. While voting, you may vote an additional time. <laughs> no, that's nice. Because normally cards like this turn into, so like, I've used so many of these ones. Like, it turns into a long breath. like, this is kind of what the card does, but, like, this is kind of what happens if you vote for this or that. And then, like, people that know are just like, just do this. <laughs> just, like, get everyone to vote for the proper vote. You know what I mean? So that's actually interesting that while voting, you can vote an additional time. <laughs> the vote, no, the subtext. The votes can be for different choices or for the same choice. <laughs> oh, counsel. Okay, okay. It's an offer you can't refuse. The nice charms. Um, star front swords to plowshares. Very beautiful. I guess we'll slowly go through for each one because, yeah. There's no reason not to. I feel like this is a, will be a nice uh, toolbox resource for people that are looking to see what they get if they get all five. Uh, for me, it costs about 180 or so to do it, but I don't know if that's more expensive or less expensive versus singleton purchases or, or the full five. I just kind of did a pre-order for one of the first times for the full five. Normally, I just go out and purchase them from stores or Walmarts or whatnot. This one looks kind of interesting. 
uh, deals combat to a damage to a player you may draw. So may draw actually is rather interesting. And the equipped creature has fear. I guess that's, I don't know if that's a new thing. I feel like fear is old. It can't be blocked except by artifact. Yeah, no, fear is old. Nice. Okay. Articane Signet, another Signet. The Spheres of Justice, more Signets. Felwar Stones, absolutely fantastic. And uh, nowadays, these are all going to be nice cards for me to trade off. And uh, yeah, some extra Swift Foot Boots. Yeah. yeah, that's something I was kind of doing beforehand. But that's just because I had a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and I trade like a maniac. Okay, so we're going to go through a little bit quicker. And just for me, isolate off a whole bunch of the legendary stuff. And stuff that looks interesting. Whenever a non-token creature dies, you lose one and create a treasure. Mm, not bad. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. For treasure-based decks, there's probably going to be some fun combination for that. Oh, nice. Another legendary here. Uh, rubbish Reclaimer. Costs one last to cast for each day. Well, actually, you know what I should do? We're going to speed through and just point out sweet cards. Astor Command's pretty sweet. Dusk is pretty nice. as a board wipe as well. And the Aftermath is Return. For two or less from grave to hand. So it's really great value for three to five. Sun Titan, yes. Sun Titan, champion of wits. Oh, yes. Chasm Skulker, nice. When I, I got my copies of Chasm, or Chasm Skulker from a couple commander sets back. So it's nice to see something like that come down. Such a nice singleton threat. Ah, oh, Knitter Kraken as well. Hey, there's a lot of pretty nice, powerful blue stuff in here. Identity Thief, you may exile a target non-legendary, or non-token creature. If you do, it becomes a copy of... Yeah, now that's pretty nice. And it comes back down, right? Return the exile to the battlefield under at the beginning of the next. That's a great way to blink stuff, but it, like, it, it does trigger the enter the... Or the ETBs, I think. Um, it's like, return the exiled card. I'm not sure if that triggers ETBs nowadays. I'm just not even going to ask. I really have not been playing as much. Hey, Drana. I remember that was like a... That was, oh, hey, camera. That was like a random 10-something dollar card way back in the day. It's still a really nice, valuable card. That's sweet to see as a reprint, you know? Profane Command as well. Okay. And hey, Aaliyah, the Artful Provocator. is super sweet builds for that that I've seen before. Hey, Dragon Lord Ajo uh, Ojutai. Yes, this is such a callback, you know. Oh, I love that. I love that, dude. I had traded mine off forever ago, but I, I have a little one to put back into my uh, back into my dragon stuff. That's going to be sweet. Hey, Thief of Sanity. Yeah, nice. Okay, this is where I have it up here so everyone can see Jazz. Exile, target non-land permanent. Sweet stuff. Target non-land permanent just feels right. The Risen Deep. Str uh, Stryonic Resonator? Hey, no, this is... Oh, cool. Well, I can do like, um, uh, I was thinking of the Teferi, the te like infinite Teferi. I'm like, oh God. I just honestly call him Teferi of the infinite. But with this, I'll have like two or three ways to make the commander go infinite on the spot. I just feel right. Um, it's the one from the Innistrad Crimson Vow. He just like goes infinite with so many random things. Like you can just have like a mana crypt, a land, and like a mana, a mana producer out. Like that's a creature. And you just, just insta-go infinite life, stare at everyone until the game's over, <laughs> like, just... Because you can have infinite life and then just not be able to end the game, you know? So, that's always fun. Hey, okay, that's really cool, actually. Well, that is, that is really... Yeah, that's something. So, one of each of nice full arts. That's actually... That's what I love to do for myself. That's actually really nice. Okay, cool. Well, let's organize this in a moment. Um... Big card here, some tentacle tokens, some fairies, some squids, some thopters, and the one ones and such are really nice additions. I gotta see what the, uh, ooh, some new treasure art. Always nice. The monarch, yes, rogue stuff, clue stuff, champion of wits stuff. New clues, new treasures for me to like mess with later on. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna put them in the same pile. I'm just gonna keep it Terran. So the pulverizer, I don't know if this is one I'm gonna use, but it's because I, I usually don't use um, like uh, this, this gameplay strategy yet. So ironically, because I don't use the gameplay strategy, I probably should. The defense contractor, very cool. At the beginning of the upkeep, put a shield counter on target. Creature and opponent controls. Okay. Whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, tap that creature and goad it. It gains trample until your next turn. Very interesting. That works well with the with this, but it's like the blue section. So in a in a five color sense, there's actually quite a strong in between here. Broker's charm is sweet. Let's see. Exotic pets create two one one blue fish tokens. With the creature can't be blocked for each kind of of counter among creatures you control. Put a counter of that kind on either of those tokens. 
actually, that seems really powerful for three. I mean, generically with no counters on anything, it's just two one ones that can't be blocked, which is decent for three. I mean, that's straight up playable in a lot of decks. But like, yeah, yeah. But on a board with a bunch of tokens, that seems pretty OP. And then like generous grit and gift rather than the, um, ooh, thrumming bird. Hey, proliferate. Nice. Yeah, there's some light proliferate engines going on. I see an evolution sage. I'm a little scared. There's also a wall of roots. Is there straight up, is that, like, is there straight up an infinite engine in this somewhere? Uh, like, there's, it's literally missing, like, one card to go infinite from stuff. <laughs> like, she's like, oh, no. Fair enough. Go, wizards, go. <laughs> Just more urban evolution. <laughs> a new ever-flowing chalice. I was like my the brain bells bells the yeah, the brain bells in my head were dinging and I was like this seems powerful <laughs> just like just off the first few cards normally for me I try to stay away from infinite combo so that's why my brain dings those bells well, let's see I think I probably missed a whole bunch of stuff but we're gonna keep on it churning for me I'm just trying to uh, separate out some of the, uh, the legendary stuff. Whenever you attack, put a shield counter on target attacking creature until end of turn it gains. Whenever this creature deals combat, remove a shield counter from it if you do draw a card. Interesting. So so it has to deal combat damage to a player. That's actually really powerful because it would force a person to decide to block it. And the only way that the creature wouldn't become indestructible for at least one time of it being destroyed I guess it doesn't count for exiled, but like the one time that it would be destroyed, it would be, yeah, I mean, that's such a weird block position. I like that. Um, as far as like a board advantage stuff goes, seems quite nice. Yeah, my hand keeps slipping down because I'm like looking at this stuff from uh, from the other angle rather than through the camera. The editor-in-chief, the cat advisor. You know, don't think about it personally. I do already. I'm kittens attack all channel. So like when I walk through and my name's Nelson Hall too. So I'll just, I'll just walk through places, right? And I'll see the moniker. I mean, I'll totally take the blame for this stuff. It's like, yes. But like, like when I walk through a city town, there is so many organizations. Declaration in Stone is actually really good. Um, but then like there's so many places that literally just have N or H. And I look at it and I'm like, totally not me. Just totally not me. Um, Luminaric Aspirant as well. There's a lot of really powerful cards in this set. Um, in each of them as as well. Like each of the sets actually. A bunch of the stuff that are, are actually just rinse washes from old commander stuff and, and isolated things that I've traded for just for individually powerful cards to do deck building. Yeah, Forgotten Ancient. Yes. Never forget Forgotten Ancient. The Elf Druid. Hey, nice. Hey, Rishtar's Expertise. All right, yeah. I know, I really liked, I really liked this card in that one, like uh, the free online. Nice, and Scavenging Ooze as well. Hydra, yes, Steelbane Hydra. Yes, a Johnny the Unyielding. Reveal the top three, put all non-land permanent cards revealed this way into your hand. And actually, I have a whole Planeswalker deck thing going on where I'm trying to put all my extra Planeswalkers into a deck. So yes, it's like Planeswalkers and Sagas, just to see how it goes. And honestly, it should be sweet. This might actually, a bunch of this deck will probably end up over there. There's like, you know, one card missing to put in. So like, hey, a Johnny. But realistically, like, I'm I'm probably going to put Fathom Age in. <laughs> like, whenever a 1-1 one, one counter. Or, well, anything that uh, goes off of the, um... Well, no, no, no. What's it? You know, ugh, my whole brain. I'm looking, not at, not at the Evolve stuff, but there is some nice Evolve stuff. Oh, yeah, Proliferate Engine stuff. Come in right in time, hybrid, to save the day. I couldn't think of something to say. Oh, rhyming. But yeah, I, I actually, this is one of the Simic Commanders that I was really interested in building, but I never purchased because the price point was a little high for me at the time when I was looking around. But yeah, no, that's that's definitely going to go into stuff. Um, just because of the double, double, bleh, double proliferation. Okay. Uh, the whole clad, clad, crystalline giant. <laughs> Oh, man. Now, like, when I think about too many things at once and just say something and I'm just sitting there like, you know what? <laughs> just, like, no thanks. Okay. It's a card bastion for proliferation. And nesting grounds. Hey, this is one of those ones I had a little while ago, but I traded them off when they were, I guess, more valuable, maybe less valuable. I'm not really sure, but I usually don't use the counter-style decks. 
and this, that, and the other. And a whole bunch of, yeah, no, this is nice. A whole bunch of the filter lands, plus a temple. You know, this is really nice purchase for in-between stuff. There's a lot of really powerful in-between, like, basic build stuff. Typically speaking, you know, commander stuff is usually a little less well-rounded, but I guess because it's a tri-color deck, they kind of just necessarily had to. But the land base itself is really strong. You know, some of the tri-lands as well, some vivids. Yeah, it's just a well-situated in-between. I mean, even with, no yeah, even with like a well-situated three or four color deck, you'd probably end up with like three or four basics of each anyway. But yeah, no, that's really nice. Okay. This is nice. And then, ooh, yeah, no, that's gonna be nice. And I'm gonna have like a nice little set for one of the next ones to do. So I guess we'll put this over here again, separate off the, the fancy thick version. Take a look at the new elementals that I have to possibly use in my token collection. And I'm a person, yes, I'm a, that is so cute. I'm a person that I like to have all the different tokens for everything that I can do. So like, just like the, the, the weird extra organization feels so right. Okay, so it looks like the extra side of this is more clue stuff. So it's like, yeah. It's a new Elementals, the cutest fish that I've ever seen. I definitely want to use that in Commander. Like, this is going to end up somewhere. It just is. I'm slowly talking myself into playing this deck anyway. And so far, the Commander stuff that's really extra in here is really nice. So let's get to opening kind of... This is one that I'm pretty sure... Uh, hell though. This is one that I'm pretty sure I do want to play a little bit more. Yes. All right, you know, I'm gonna do the thing. Just gonna do it. Yes, rip everything. Use the use the man hands. I was really interested in the bliss and the blitz uh, for just an in between kind of fast aggro deck. I usually don't, and I as a person usually don't build black commanders. Oh, oh, shnikes! It's all upside down. It's all misprinted or something. Okay, so fair enough. So, <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see what's going on with this commander. Vigilance Haste, uh, tap to target opponent whose turn it is, puts target non-legendary creature card from the graveyard into the battlefield under their control. It gains haste, goad it, and at the beginning of the next end, end step, exile it. Dude, <laughs> from your graveyard? So you just have to mill yourself, give them something good to hit someone else with, and then it just gets exiled? <laughs> no, I like that. No, I like that a lot. Like, that's, that's actually interesting. And then this card... Okay, so wait, this card is a treasure? You know, I think I'm going to look through some of this extra stuff later, but there's some really sweet stuff. Hey, another artisan. Hey, I love artisan. I've had one forever. That was from when I got the misprinted stuff. So, hey, yeah, hey, get another one of those. Ooh, another explore. Another far seek too. Yes, Garouk's Uprising. I did need a second one of these, actually. I am short on green stuff. And one of the subtle things is that this five is going to go towards what I was thinking was going to be my uh, ooh, nice enchantment bit. You're going to need each end step. If a creature died, you may draw. So each end step, that's a nice like two or three on the in-between just for a consistent draw step. But I was thinking of turning this one into a second block of, um, you know, it, it was supposed to be like second block worth of investments and stuff. But honestly, I'm just so confused <laughs> about what to do with all of like, you know, how I think about holding cards, other than to just make a whole bunch of fun nonsense decks like I would have, still trade stuff like an absolute maniac, nice Deathbringer Regent, and just more or less end up doing the same thing I did before, but just thinking of it a little bit differently. And Itali, hey, yeah, I have a couple of those random ones. That is very cool. Inferno Titan, did not have an Inferno Titan. Stalking Vengeance. I've died to this a few times. Whenever another creature control dies, it deals damage equal to its power to target player. Yeah, no, I know why I've died from this. Yeah, uh, it's good memories. <laughs> nice adventure of Zendikar. Nice, Evolutionary Leap. There's a few things I did. Yeah, that's actually really nice. It's a nice creature search engine. Yeah, I could definitely... This could go into Elementals so hard. Like, okay, I'm gonna stop, like... I'm gonna stop thinking about it. Oh, and I just got, uh, I bought some Marasas like about half a year ago or so to add to one of my, one of my other decks. You know, this is such a nice in-between. 
This is like a, a repeat of some of the stuff that I've gotten just because I know that it's really powerful. Uh, this is one I haven't gotten and you know exactly that. Other ones that I haven't gotten or just haven't gone out of my way to get that are just right here. Woodfall, Woodfall Primus, yes, yes. Now this is one that I wanted to do to mess around with in Simic decks. Um, World Shaper as well. I actually traded my World Shapers off because other people were using them at the time. But yeah, the, like Merfolk stuff was like all big and stuff back when it came out. Um, whenever another creature dies, we put an X11 counters where X is that creature's power. That's actually a really nice one. I think I've seen this one before somewhere, but I can't remember if I played against it or not. Wind Grace's Judgment, nice. Life Crafter, nice. I traded all of mine off way forever ago. This is such a great memory road. And you know, these lands, really solid, really solid lands. Like just a really solid mix of duels plus, um, you know, nice like, yeah, like functional lands, another moss word. You know, I have purchased four of them to mix into green decks. This is a really impressive commander season, it really is. Everything has the soul rings, the fell wars. Out of all of them, I don't know what seems to be the best, but as far as tricolor stuff, a lot of this stuff is also, you know, this. I mean, this is like a multi, any any multicolor land. It comes with three. So this is just a really, really good deck building bit. Honestly, super impressed. Um, and the art too. Yes, that's nice. Ah. No, that's just there. Okay. Not a blemish. Very nice, very nice. Let's take a look at all the oozes. The oozes that I, when you when this creature dies, create two one one oozes. Oh, okay, that's actually I should probably read some of the fine print. And then here's the one one oozes. Nice. Some more ah, oh, some more citizen tokens. I think I have one that looks like this one, but oh, nice plants. Nice. I have some of these old ones. That's really cool. It's cool to see with like the different frame and stuff. Okay. And yeah, beautiful. And new treasure tokens. Very cool. Very cool. So there's a selection. There's a selection of treasure tokens to use. All right. So I think there's a it, there's a fifth deck somewhere, right? I feel like I'm like throwing things everywhere. There is a fifth deck. <laughs> that's, just, that's the other one that I was thinking of doing. Either uh, tour, well, tour and Oculus look really interesting to me. But I gotta say, being kittens attack all makes me feel like I should. Definitely, I actually have Ren and Siri, but so like, <laughs> I actually, I have plans to do a dog cat deck eventually, but you know, I will be the Mayhem Diva for a moment. It feels right, it feels right <laughs> when it enters the battlefield. I'm not gonna read it, people can totally Google. I'm gonna read half of it, just be consistent. <laughs> Creature tokens you control have haste and parlay. At the beginning of combat on your turn, each player reveals the top card of their library. For each land card revealed this way, create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. Then creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. For each non-land card revealed this way, then each player draws a card. That's actually really nice. So everyone draws, and then you get a slight buff plus creatures for each land. And then you get the, the slight buff for the non-lands, but it's only until the end. But everyone draws. This is actually a really nice parlay card. I really like this one for politics because this this makes me feel like I'm gonna target other people and just make them attack each other beneficially. Like it's it's just so odd. Like you make you make the uh, like a one right in the beginning of the combat on each player's turn. You may tap two untapped creatures you control. Then when you do target player or target creature that player controls gets a plus two plus two and gains trample until end of turn. Goad the creature. So you have to tap your own creatures. But then you target the biggest thing they have and force it to attack in a way that doesn't attack you, which ultimately just means you have to politic in a way that the person doesn't get pissed off and just decide to attack you later with everything else. Like, it is, it is great. Like, yes. <laughs> We're going to zoom through this a little bit. Uh, just take a second to point out cards that are pretty sweet. Oh, here we go. Intangible Virtue. Creature tokens you control get plus one, plus one, and have vigilance. That little one, two is actually pretty freaking good. And Abacus is one of those ones. Ooh, Path to Exile. Another one I saw forever ago. People uh, had a high price point on it when it first came out because it's just individually good. Each player may put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature they control. If the player does, creatures uh, that player control can't attack you or planeswalkers you control until your next turn. So they have to basically choose 
to do more damage and then not attack you or, you know, wait a turn and this, that, and the other. Like, kind of old Kanat. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. No, I like that. Path to Exile, Beast Within. Oh, a nice little one, too. Yeah. Cultivate stuff, harmonize, draw three. Drawing three. Oh, that art is actually... Hmm. Animals commune with their environment without the need for language. There's a fundamental connection that surpasses flimsy words. Vivian Reed. Nice. I did read it. All right. Okay, so <laughs> Leap Kendra, Sakura Tribe Elder, it's Fred, very nice, or whatever generic name. I feel like Steve is kind of where everyone goes with that. I'm not going to lie. You know, we'll see. We'll see. I'll see if I can just say Fred a couple times. Grand Crescendo, create X11 green white citizen tokens, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn, and it's an instant. That, actually, that reminds me of Mul March of the Multitudes, really similar. Um, if there is a March of the Multitudes in here, that'd be pretty sweet, but hey, you never know. Master of Ceremonies, or at least I don't. I'm, I'm pretty in the dark with this one, um, but still really, yeah. Oh, okay, cool, new new, uh, new elemental bit. First Strike, Trample, End Haste. Whenever Life of the Party attacks, it gets X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. Ooh, <laughs> when Life of the Party enters the battlefield, it's not a token. Each opponent creates a token that's a copy of it. Um... The tokens are goaded for the rest of the game. <laughs> no, this is, that's fantastic. That's going in my elementals. <laughs> it's like, yes. Oh, no, that's going to be fantastic. Oh, right, hello, hello, camera. I'm bumping into you in the middle of this lap. <laughs> Killer service. Oh, when Killer service enters the battlefield, create a number of food tokens equal to the number of opponents you have. And at the beginning of your end step, you may pay two and sacrifice them. If you do, create a 4-4 green rhino creature token. Nice. That's yeah, a nice enchantment. I guess that means you would want to blink it or, like, reuse it over time. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, brain. We're just, just going through. I'm going to actually take a second. Just sip the coffee. I have it on the side for myself just to enjoy, like, midway. But we're getting there. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, the Calabaretti Confluence. Choose three. This is a couple of these. The choose threes that are in here are really interesting to me. When I go through to try to do a five color deck or a four color of these, I'm probably going to put a bunch of these into one thing. Um, create a token. That's kind of why I'm reading them. Or maybe I just shouldn't explain it. Nope. Next thing. Not even going to read it. That seems terrible. All right. So let's keep on going through. Call the Copper Coats. Duelist Heritage. Nice. Such an old card. Really great. Felidar Retreat. Again. Really nice stuff. Fell the Mighty, destroy all creatures with power greater than target creature's power. Very nice. As one creature survives, everything else dies, hopefully. Destroy all other creatures. Agitator Ant, too. This one, this deck actually seems interesting. This one seems like a whole bunch of battle tricks and actually sneakily good stuff and a lot of goading. If I had to guess, I would actually say this one might win over, over other ones. Unless, like, the person with Oculus has something out. And there's a wheel as well. Tyrant of the Cliffs. Hey. You know, I'm going to say that the one that has a cat in front of it is totally just going to beat all the other ones. It's the best deck. You know? This seems like what I should say. The Chaos Rider. Oh, wait. Is this one of the partners? Or, um, whatever. Do, 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 do. Create a red. One red. No, but it is super sweet. Whenever one or more devils you control... Me as a Christian guy going like, you know, I'll do a devil deck. Just, just for, just for, just for, the, you know, for my own sake. You know, <laughs> the endless web. Um, Awakening zone. Actually really nice. I didn't get any of these from before. Hmm. A lot of, you know, there is some really powerful cards in all of this. You know, this is, this is sweet. I feel like this well rounds a lot of my, a lot of my co uh, collection of stuff that I've wanted. I feel like I've said it a bunch of times. Some really powerful enchantments. There's a Scoot Swarm in here as well. Shamanic is really nice. Um, Sylvan Offering stuff. You know, this is probably... I, I'm going to say it. I, I don't want to say that other, you know, commander sets aren't as good. But these commander sets are really powerful cards in here. Um, as far as, like, outward value of singletons, this is, like, a lot of value. And sure, like, the value of stuff goes down over time, but 
after like three or four years or something, it's, it's just gonna restabilize to write about the same prices that all these cards were before. Even, hey, March of the Multitudes, let's go. We're gonna end up probably before, you know. Um, let's see, so many, yeah, this is nice, this is nice. Nice, Silvala, so Idol of Oblivion. I think what I'm gonna do is just generically keep saying everything is nice because it is. It just feels like the vibe today. And this is one of the cool ones. I've seen people, I think, play this or something similar with the, maybe I'm thinking of like become one with the Eldrazi or something. It's like a, a 10 drop enchantment. I'm not sure if I've seen this before, but I definitely want to play it. I, I saw create a 10, 10 and I was, my brain was like, I want to do that. <laughs> so Cinder Blade, exotic. And again, really nice lands. All of these together, I feel like I I feel like from buying these five, I have kind of, well, yeah, kind of, I, I never had this one for Hideaway. This is the one I didn't buy. Eh, without paying its mana cost, if you attacked with three or more creatures. Oh, and then uh, Hideaway 4. Yeah, to so explain what Hideaway is. When this land enters the battlefield, look at the top four of the library, exile one of them face down, then put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Okay, so the, the one that has the Hideaway 5. That's rather interesting. Okay. And this condition is just like a, having a power a creature with power seven or something like that, or a creature that like also has a one one something like that. Interesting card. But just super happy with all the in betweens of this. Quite surprised at the kind of just the overt and balance and power level of the cards here. Um, all right. So I'm gonna stop being positive, Nelson, and saying everything's really good, and we're gonna start pooping on this last deck. It's, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that really, but. Still. Oh, here's the 10-10. Really nice. That's pretty sweet. The Eldrazi spawn too. Nice devil tokens. Ogre. Beast. The tree folk. Star Star. Oh, the coffee burps. Citizen treasure. I think this was a, a similar one to the other ones. I'll have to take a look, I guess. But yeah. Do 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 do. Spiders, sapperlings, insects. A really big variety of this. Yeah, again, I like this. I feel like this is, you know, for me as a person, when I started playing Magic the Gathering and like looking at the price points and stuff, the, you know, the way it was explained to me was that it was just super expensive to play if you wanted to play high levels. And, you know, I feel like commander sets really bring a nice medium to high tier level play right into the start of it. Oh, yeah, life. Oh, oh, it has some of that grease, whatever. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, the names are slightly, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Misprints. I love misprints. The names are slightly, uh, uh, not emboldened. Uh, I'll take a further look at them at some point, I guess. Not get too interested or excited. Okay, the subtle brush. Whenever you or a permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless the, that player pays for life. Whenever you copy a spell, up to one target opponent may also copy that spell, then may choose new targets for that cop, or they may uh, choose new co new targets for that copy. Actually, really interesting. Yes, and me, I love my misprints. I love them all. So. Who knows? I'll definitely take a look at this section. I know some of them are slightly off-center and such, but as far as misprints go, I really like the, the ones that are subtly a little bit less on the, the ink. That's nice. Um, this, that, and the other. The Charms, the Maestress Theater, Deep Analysis. Um, the Flashback Pay 3. You know, this reminds me of uh, Research the Deep, where you do like Clash and stuff, but that's really nice. Factor Fiction, Frantic Search. Hey, and I was looking for Frantic Search. I traded mine forever ago, and I needed it in one of my decks, but I didn't want to buy it either. No, yes, yes, awesome. Okay, Preordain, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> just like, just like life. Right of the Raging Storm. Okay, uh, creatures named Lightning Rager. <laughs> Lightning Rager can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player creates a 5-5 five, five, or 5-1 five, red elemental creature token named Lightning Rager. It has trample haste and at the beginning of the end step, sacrifice this creature. Dude. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I love this goad stuff because it's so great. Like you make some big creature and just be like, so by the way, 
you can't attack me, but, like, you do have to attack. <laughs> like, you just, just straight up, like, cause trouble for everyone except for yourself. And this subtle truth is that if you do that too many times, people just look at you instead. Like, it's just, it's such a great loop of politics. It's absolutely fantastic. And I mean, I love that loop of politics because the strongest decks that I've played are all group hug style decks that more or less on the upper end of that basically forces people to play their entire decks in a way that they didn't plan to play them. And like people will start to stare at you like, can, can you just not play that deck? <laughs> just because they want to like, you know, lie. It is, it is such a great one. Okay, Carrier of the Flame. Flying in haste. At the beginning of each player's end step, if a creature's card or a creature card left your graveyard this turn, target Phoenix you control deals damage equal to its power to any target. Whenever another Phoenix you control dies, you may cast Strix carry of, Carrier of the Flame from your graveyard. And I think I said Strix, but was not a T in that mix. <laughs> the Smuggler's Burglar. Clone Legion. Actually, you know, that's actually really interesting. Yeah, I like that. Dig through dawn from or drawn from dreams mystic confluence. Hey, nice. You know, there's a bunch of these tri mode cards that are really powerful that are just hard to get your hands on because people don't really have them. And, and like, even if you go to stores and stuff, just depending, because usually car, I guess cards like that are like put into like sets of three or four for like a weird modern deck or something, or they're just like you know organized away in commander sets inside of you know the one singleton that people do have. Um, puppeteer click. Hey, nice. Some more persist stuff. Reign of the Pit. Sever the Bloodline. Sky Cleaver Shade. Ah, Woe Strider. Okay. Me as a person, I kind of want to speed through this last little bit and say goodbye to you guys. But honestly, they're still really good cards. <laughs> I, remember, I remember playing like weird rekindling Phoenix stuff on here and Squee. Nice. Um, and that's one of the first cards that you can cast from exile, or possibly one of the only. I guess, well, Squee, I guess, was the first creature that you could... Oh, it's called a Skybreaker. Dude, okay. Yes, there's so many cards. And Kess, I've never had a Kess. Yeah, this honestly, I feel like this rounds my collection up in such a nice way. So, blast through these last lands, the Lightning Greaves, the beautiful Wafers Bobble, some of these extra lands and such. And the tri, the tri lands that are any color, and then take a look at, and then they're yeah, one, two, one, two, and take a look at the last full art lands in this pile. All right, so that's what we have for this stuff. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. It's been your boy Kittens uh, doing another one of these bits of openings. I think the way that I do it will end up changing over time because I'm, you know, waiting for giant lawsuit crap money stuff. And we'll, you know, inadvertently end up on the news from that. So, realistically speaking, eh, it's a little bit of a weird thing for me to just keep buying stuff. I'm kind of just going to bunker down and relax and wait for, like, free money to come rolling in. So, this has been your boy Kittens. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I feel like this is a really sweet opening. And I feel like, frankly speaking, this is really good monetary purchase over time. So... Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, this, that, and the other. It's been your boy Kittens. Peace.